Archipelago country with abundant natural resources, the land of paradise with thousands of tribes and local languages. Yogyakarta is a gateway to Indonesia's natural beauty and exoticism with breathtaking views and unique philosophical cultures. It is a city where people carve indelible memories. Welcome to Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Since 1981, we have flourished and innovated to serve the community. We are a young university, but our achievements are remarkable. We elevate our university and support our student and teaching staff to achieve their goals through research, innovation, and creativity. The COVID-19 pandemic does not cease our path. It has been our responsibility to adapt and to innovate. Upholding three principles of higher education, we are certainly welcome the new era to develop Indonesia and enlighten the universe.
Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta Muda Mendunia
Your Excellency, the member of Board of Trustees in IBTAV, and War Ethno Sport Confederation President, Mr. Bilal Erdogan, the President of Board of Directors in IBTAV, Mr. Mijit Chetinkaya, Director of Kirikala University and Vice President of Board of Directors in IBTAV, Professor Dr. Ersan Aslan. The advisor to Rector for Internationalization and Head of International Office at Kirikale University, Assistant Professor Dr. Zainab Bashas. The Deputy Head of International Office at Kirikale University, Assistant Professor Dr. Mehtab Aral Duvan. Your Excellency, Director of Universitas Muhammadiyah, Yogyakarta, Professor Dr. Insinyur Gunawan Budianto, MP, IPM. Your Excellency, the Vice Rector for Academic Affairs, Professor Dr. Insinyur Sukamta, ST, MT, IPM. Your Excellency, the Vice Rector for Student Alumni and Al Islam Kemuhammadiyahan, Mr. Faris Al Fadat, PhD. The Honorable, the Director of Cooperation International Affairs, Ms. Fitri Arofiati, PhD. The Director of CISIC UMY, Mr. Muhammad Rafiq Muzakir, PhD. And all of participants that attend Memorandum of Understanding between Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta and Kirikale University, followed by the public lecture of Kirikale University, Turkey. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlilhu fala hadiyalah asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wa asyhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah la nabiyya wa la rasula ba'da First of all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us his mercy and blessing so we can meet in this room in healthy condition and attend today's agenda Secondly, salawat and salam may always be presented to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alaihi. Who has brought us from darkness to the lightness. Ladies and gentlemen, on this wonderful day, please allow me to start our agenda today by reciting Bismillah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The first agenda is singing the national anthem of Indonesia and national anthem of Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, please be rise.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The next agenda is the welcoming remark delivered by the Rector of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, Professor Dr. Insinyur Gunawan Budianto, MP IPM. The Rector, the stage is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Asyhadu alla ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lah. Wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu la nabiyya ba'da. Rabbi sori saudari wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. The honorable Mr. Bilal Erdogan member of uh, board of uh, trustees in IBT IFI and what uh, atmosphere uh, confederation president the honorable mr uh, mesit sitin kaya the president of board of director in uh, IBT IFI the honorable professor dr uh, ersan aslam Rector of Kirikili uh, University and Vice President of Board of Directory in IB uh, TFE. The Honorable Associate Professor Dr. Uh, Sidney Basir, Advisor to Rector uh, for International Session and Head of International Officer in Kirikili University, and also uh, the Honorable Associate Professor Dr. Mehrab. Uh, Duyan, Deputy Head of International Office at Kirkkele uh, University, Colleges, Vice Director, Dance Director, and uh, my beloved students. Good afternoon. Distinguished guests, allow me to uh, extend my gratitude to the delegation uh, for uh, your interest in visiting uh, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta and initiate uh, the academic collaboration. It is such an uh, honor for us to uh, welcome uh, you here in the university and have uh, an interesting talk about uh, Islam and uh, science. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, our university uh, motto is Ungul and Islami, or in English uh, called uh, leading and Islamic as part of uh, 171 uh, higher education institution uh, across the Indonesia under Muhammadiyah organization. We have heard uh, the values uh, the Islam is uh, every day's university uh, business. We internalize uh, and uh, integrate uh, the values of uh, Islam into many aspects to the university, including uh, the teaching and research uh, activities. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, the center uh, went to Turkey uh, to learn and to do uh, benchmarking, uh, benchmarking from the similar uh, center or research group in uh, Istanbul, Ankara, Konya, and uh, Bursa. I think Turkey has been always uh, one of the good uh, reference in learning the integration of Islam and science as it uh, has a long history of the Islamic uh, golden age. Today, we are grateful that uh, we can uh, continue uh, to learn more about, uh, about it here, here in the university not only uh, CISIC can take advantage of it, but also uh, the lecturers and students of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Finally, <coughs> I would like to uh, thank you for your visit, yes, you. and uh, we look forward uh, to working with you, uh, with you in our agreement that we are about to send today. Have a good uh, lecture and a fruitful discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Nasrullah, uh, Wafatun Korib, 
wabashiril mu'minin wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you, Professor Gunawan, for the speech. The third agenda is the welcoming speech delivered by Nejmeta Bilal Erdoga. D. Nejmeta, please come to the stage. Assalamu alaikum, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we are very happy to be here and uh, we would like to thank the management, the uh, president uh, of the Muhammad University in Yogyakarta. Uh, we are here as the Fuad Sezgin Foundation and Kirikala University together. Uh, and Fuad Sezgin Foundation, uh, the president, uh, Mr. Chetinkaya, is going to talk about. But I would like to talk briefly about Fuad Sezgin. Uh, why he matters uh, for Muslims. Uh, his uh, life of 94, 94 years was dedicated to studying the history of um, Islamic sciences. Basically, what he tried to uh, point out was that uh, scientific development uh, never ceased to develop. And especially, he wanted to highlight the development of sciences and technology between 8th century and 18th century uh, with the leadership of Muslim scholars. So what the West calls the Dark Ages was actually the Dark Ages for the Western sciences. Meanwhile, the Muslim scientists were actually developing the sciences and technologies. And Professor Sezgin's research, his writings, uh, his museums in uh, Frankfurt and Istanbul, his library in Istanbul, and the institute that was founded under his leadership in Istanbul all try to uh, disseminate this uh, knowledge, especially to the Muslim world. Because uh, the main message is science is the legacy of all mankind, all humankind, and if the Western civilization seems to be ahead now. All we need to do is study what is out there and then develop it and go beyond where the Western civilization has taken it. So his uh, very short message was, you can do it because you have done it before. So uh, no Muslim youth or researcher should think that the Muslim civilization is behind now because of our religion, because of our beliefs, because this is sort of the underlining message the Western media tries to portray. So as Muslims, we know that we can surpass the Western civilization, and we know that uh, the civilizational duty is a circular thing in the history. One civilization rises, another falls, and there is sort of a duty change between them. And the Western civilization has seen its peak, and we don't know which civilization will take on the duty of uh, promoting sciences and technology, promoting uh, the benefit for the humanity. And this can very well be the Muslim civilization again, uh, because we have seen the, uh, the, the, the epoch, the top of sciences and advancement in scholarly work. Uh, last week I was in Andalusia in Spain, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the Cordoba, uh, Granada, etc. And the, the civilization that lived in Spain for 800 years was the top of its time. And unfortunately, uh, the Western civilization uh, did a genocide on all Muslims and also Jews living in under the Muslim uh, sultans in, in, in, in Iberian Peninsula. So uh, the, our civilization does not have a history of genocide. Our civilization has always carried a message of peace. Uh, during uh, Andalusian Muslim rule, we talk about convivencia, where all religions coexisted peacefully together. 
During Saladin rules in Jerusalem, we witnessed the same thing. During, during Ottoman Empire, we witnessed the same thing. And now in Indonesia, we witnessed the same thing. Muslims, when they rule, uh, they have to respect the constitution of Medina under the Prophet, where all religions coexisted peacefully side by side. So, uh, inshallah, you find out more about Fuad Sezgin's work. And inshallah, this is a good starting point for closer scholarly uh, collaboration between uh, friendly and brotherly uh, countries of Indonesia and, and Turkey. Uh, I would like to thank again for uh, this uh, welcoming, and uh, I hope we hold many uh, visitations back and forth. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much, Mr. Erdoga, for the speech as the member of Board of Trustees in IBTAV. The next welcoming speech will be delivered by Mr. Mijit Chetinkaya as the President of Board of Directors in IBTAV. Please come to the stage. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sayın Rektör Profesör Doktor Budianto, Sayın Rektör Yardımcıları, Sayın Hocalar ve Değerli Öğrenciler. Dear Rector Profesör Doktor Budianto, uh, Dear Vice Rectors and Dear Academic Staff and Students. Eserleri İslam bilim tarihine ışık tutan ve müracaat kaynağı olan Profesör Doktor Fuat Sezgin çalışmalarını İstanbul'a taşımak istediğinde İslam Bilim Tarihi Araştırmaları Vakfı'nı 2010 yılında İstanbul'da kurmuştur. Profesör Doktor Fuat Sezgin whose uh, works uh, aims to enlighten uh, the history of science founded the uh, research a foundation for the history of science in Islam in Istanbul in 2012. 8. ve 18. yüzyıllar arasında Müslüman bilim insanlarının dünya medeniyetine kazandırdıkları eserlerin replikalarının olduğu Almanya'daki müzenin aynısını İstanbul'da Topkapı Sarayı'nın bahçesinde Gülhane'de kurmuştur. He also established uh, the uh, and other museum which are which is similar to the one in Germany uh, that includes uh, the replicas of the works which ha which had which were developed by Muslim scholars between 8th and 18th centuries in Istanbul at Gülhane Park. Sonrasında Almanya'da hayatı boyunca biriktirdiği ve içinde 1000-1200 yıllık el yazması eserlerin bulunduğu Muazzam Kütüphanesi'ni müzenin yanında bulunan kendi ve eşinin adını taşıyan Profesör Doktor Fuat Sezgin ve Doktor Ursula Sezgin Kütüphanesi'ne taşımıştır. Uh, furthermore, he also moved, the, moved his own library uh, he, that he collected the handwritten uh, pieces of works which, rem, which, in, um, which are actually 1000 and 100 and 102,000 years of works. And he founded uh, the museum in Istanbul, which carries the names of his own and his wife, Professor Dr. Fuat Sezgin and Dr. Ursula Sezgin Library. Ancak bu kitapların yarısı Almanya'da kalmıştır. However, half of the volumes of these books uh, remained in Germany. Cumhurbaşkanımız Sayın Recep Tayyip Erdoğan Beyefendi, hocamızın 2018 yılında vefatından sonra 2019 yılını Profesör Doktor Fuat Sezgin yılı ilan etmiştir. Our President Recep Tayyip Erdoğan announced that, declared that uh, the year of 2019 as the year of Professor Dr. Fuad Sezgin after our Professor Dr. Fuad Sezgin passed away in 2018. Vakfımız bir yıl içerisinde 2000 civarında etkinlik düzenlemiş ve Fuat Sezgin çalışmalarını tüm dünyaya anlatmaya çalışmıştır. Our foundation organized around two 
2,000 activities uh, in one year and aim to, uh, on, aim to distribute the name of Professor Dr. Fuat Saizgin around the world. Hocamızın amacı ve isteği İstanbul'u bir bilim merkezi haline getirmekti. The main purpose of our Professor Dr. Fuat Saizgin was to make, the, make Istanbul a center of science. Bu yüzden İstanbul'da Fatih Sultan Mehmet Vakıf Üniversitesi'nde kendi adını taşıyan bilim tarihiyle ilgili en üst düğü kurmuştur. That's why he also established an institute in Fatih Sultan Mehmet Vakıf University with his own name. Vakfımız bu üniversitede okuyan öğrencilere lisans, yüksek lisans ve doktora için burs vermektedir. Our foundation gives the students in this university scholarship at different levels including uh, undergraduate and graduate levels. Bu çalışmaların bu duruma gelmesinde hocamız ile bizzat ilgilenen ve tüm bu hizmetlerin gerçekleşmesini hocamızın Türkiye ve İslam dünyasına yeniden kazandırılmasını sağlayan uh, all these attempts all these works uh, which aims to uh, contribute contrib uh, which aims to um, deliver the works of Professor Dr. Fuat Sezgin all around the world and in Turkey was achieved Cumhurbaşkanımız Sayın Recep Tayyip Erdoğan'dır. Was achieved uh, with, by, the, by the esteemed support of our pre president Recep Tayyip Erdoğan. Bu vesileyle huzurlarınızda Sayın Cumhurbaşkanımıza şükranlarımı arz ediyorum. Taking this opportunity, I would like to thank our president Recep Tayyip Erdoğan. Söz konusu İslam dini olduğunda hiçbir şeye sirgemeyen, canla başla çalışan diğer konularda olduğu gibi Sayın Cumhurbaşkanımız bu konuda da hassasiyetle üstünde durmaktadır. When it comes to our religion, Islam, uh, as always our president uh, do, does his best uh, in this issue as well. He did all his, all his attempts in order to strengthen this aim. Vakfın her türlü çalışmalarına destek olan Türkiye'ye geldiği günlerden beri hastalığı süresince ve vefat edene kadar yakinen ilgilenen yanında olan vakfımızın mütebelli heyeti üyesi biraz önce de konuşmasını yapan Sayın Cumhurbaşkanımız Recep Tayyip Erdoğan'ın mahdumu Sayın Necmettin Bilal Erdoğan Beyefendi'ye de sonsuz teşekkür ediyorum. I also sincerely thank uh, the son of our Turkish president uh, and also the also one of our delegates who delivered his speech a few minutes ago uh, he he wholeheartedly took good care of professor dr fuat sezgin throughout his years in turkey throughout his years uh, which uh, in which he was feeling sick kendisi ülkemizde bilim ve eğitimle ilgili çok güzel başarılı çalışmalar yapmaktadır ve devam bu çalışmalara devam etmektedir uh, Mr. Nijmetin Bilal Erdoğan uh, does uh, very good uh, works in our country in order to achieve all these goals that we have mentioned. Bugün imzalayacağımız protokol ile bu beraberliğimizin devam etmesi arzusundayız. With the protocol that we are going to sign today, we deeply uh, hope that our cooperation and our partnership will continue. Bu çerçevede Sizleri iki yılda bir düzenlediğimiz Profesör Doktor Fuat Sezgin Uluslararası Bilim Tarihi Sempozyumunda misafir etmek arzusundayız. We also would like to invite you to our um, event that are organized once uh, two years uh, by our foundation. İnşallah sizleri İstanbul'da ağırlama imkanı bizlere verirsiniz. Inshallah, uh, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome you in our foundation in Istanbul. Bu organizasyondan dolayı sizleri ve emeği geçenleri tebrik eder. I congratulate everyone who contributed to this organization. Başarılarınızın devamını diler. And wish you all the success. Davetinizden dolayı tekrar çok teşekkür ederim. Allah'a emanet olunuz. Sevgi ve saygılarımızla. And thank you all for your invitation again. Uh, 
God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Miji Tentikaya, for the speech. Now, move to the next agenda. Memorandum of Understanding Signings. The first Memorandum of Understanding Signing by Uwen Universitas Muhammadiyah, Yogyakarta, and Kirikale University. We would like to invite Professor Dr. Insignor Gunawan Budianto and Professor Dr. Ersan Aslan in front of the stage. Please give applause. Dear Professor Gunawan and Professor Ersan, please remain in front of the stage. Next is the handover of token appreciation by UIN Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta and Kirikale University. Okay. Thank you, Professor Dr. Es uh, Dr. Ersan Aslan. Okay. The second memorandum of understanding signing by Uben Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta and Professor Dr. Fuad Sezgin Research Foundation. Please give applause. <laughs> Dear Mr. Bilal Erdogan and Mr. Mijis Chandikaya, please remain on the stage, in front of the stage. Yeah, please remain in front of the stage with Professor Gunawan. Next is handover of token appreciation from Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta to Professor Dr. Fuad Sezgin Research Foundation. Okay. Handover. Dear ladies and gentlemen, please give a big applause once more.
Okay. The next agenda is the handover of token appreciation by UN Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta and Kirikale University. We would like to invite again in front of the stage our Rector, Professor Dr. Insinyur Gunawan Budianto and Director of Kirikale University, Professor Dr. Ersan Aslan in front of the stage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The memorandum, the hand over the token. Token like? Oh, the token. Uh, the token between U M Y and the, uh, not the the the, uh, the M O is finished, and now the token of appreciation. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Dr. Insinyur Gunawan Budianto and Professor Dr. Ersan Aslan. The next agenda is the sixth agenda is the public lecture that will be guided by our moderator, Mr. Muhammad Rafiq Muzakir, PhD. The time is yours. Please give applause. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa mawala amma ba'du. I would like to begin this session by letting you know that this event is attended by uh, hundreds of participants through uh, social media, through YouTube and Zoom. Uh, not everyone uh, is able to join in person, but uh, this event is being watched by uh, many uh, participants uh, through other means. So, uh, as our rector has just said previously that our university, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, has just recently established a new uh, center, it's called CISIC, Center for uh, Islamic uh, integrative science and study of uh, Islamic civilization. So this center works in the field of uh, history of philosophy and the philosophy of science. So, and currently we are working uh, on the project of you know excavating the establishment, excavating the achievement of uh, you know our scholars in the past as. Uh, uh, Dr. or Mr. Uh, Bilal Erdogan has mentioned earlier. So uh, we are very serious about, uh, you know, recalling the, mom the, the memory of the achievement in the past. So when we heard that uh, this foundation is coming to us, we are very, very happy. Uh, we are delighted because this perfectly matched with our need with uh, our scientific program. So uh, without further ado, I would like to invite our next speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Ersan Aslan, and he is the Rector of Kirikale University and Vice President of the Board of the Directors of uh, uh, Professor Fuad Sisgin Research Foundation. He will be giving a speech on the history of science. Please give applause to him. Can you open our presentation, please? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. 
Uh, I am very happy today to be invited here and <clears throat> warm welcoming in your university. Besides, I am very happy to be with our uh, young people. I say our because you are in our region, in our civilization. Uh, your turn will be next turn, inshallah, in the future. We, are, we will talk about our future. Not only our future, but also the humanity future, what we will do, what we will remember from the old days, and what are we doing at the moment, and what we will not, but you will, what you will do in the future, we will talk about these topics. From now on, I want to carry on speaking or talking to you not only as director, but only as your brother. Okay. We say, we should say brothers and sisters. From now on, I want to say to young men, brothers, and young ladies, sisters. Did you accept? Okay, um, let's, let's start with. Now, as Mr. Erdogan and Mr. Çetinkaya mentioned about Fuat Sezgin, Fuat Sezgin is this man. And this honorable scientist in the world, I think. So he spent his entire life, I mean the 94 years, to, to show what our past did in, in, in the old days. So while we are talking here, could you change the slide, please? How can we, who is directing slides? Okay. What can I do to change the slide? If, if I say next, okay, okay. Only I, I can say this. Okay, I can show this, my fingers, okay? Now, presentation, if you look at the presentation plan, what do the Western community think about history of science? The first of all, we will look at this uh, explanation. The honorable and res respectable scientists said many things about the history of science, but conscientious scientists talk about the continuity thesis. What does it mean? We'll say one or two words about them. And the other thing is, what did Muslim culture do in science, education, and technology? Did they do anything or not? We will, I will give some examples about, the, not for all of them, but I, I, a few uh, examples I will give you, I will show you. And I am over 60 years old. Our uh, president of foundation, older than me, <laughs> older than me, and Mr. Erdogan, is coming to the 60s. So we are, we are about uh, to, to live the life. But you are coming. OK? You are coming. How we will encourage ourselves? Not I am not. I, I have written there, how can we encourage our youth, but not youth, all of them. You understand, if I say, our youth, you understand whole world youth, okay? And how can we build our future uh, from now on? Yes. 
Before talking about the examples, we should ask some thought-provoking ideas about about our our future. Let's say our future. If is there any interruption, the hist no back please, in the history of human life after creation, is there any interruption? And you say, you will say no. And the second question is, could there, could there have been a period when humanity didn't produce knowledge? And can you imagine, is there any period without, without creating knowledge? Another question is, could, have, could there have been a decrease or discontinuity in human curiosity to learn. Human being is a curiosity. So all the time after creation, everyone, everyone thought what can he or she do, does in his or her life. The other uh, question is, Could it have been possible for humankind to survive without producing any devices or appliances they needed? If you say yes, the life should have been stopped there, shouldn't carry on. The, maybe we can we will talk about the is there continuity thesis wrong? And you don't know at the moment what is the continuous, continuity thesis, but you will learn uh, one or two slides after. Yes, please. Now, the first question was, what is the Western view of history of science? The majority of scientists in the European countries thinks there is an ancient age, ages somewhere that there are there are the dates, and something happened after a thousand years. Renaissance started suddenly. They say. There was ancient ages, and here, Renaissance started. What about the thousand years between these ages? Yes, please. And there is, there is ages which our culture, our civilization, lived the golden age time. Golden age. They translated the heritage brought by the other scientists from our culture, from our civilization, and the other civilization that they, they translated and created some sciences and then contribute to the we can say to the European countries, European land. There are a huge knowledge, technological <clears throat> advances, and institutional movements in our golden age time. Of course, many people think, in fact, the European culture call this period dark age, but their dark age, but not our, it is not our dark age. Our, our, they call it the dark age, we call it golden age of Islam. So, we will show the, the, the, the uh, examples. Continue to thesis says, there is not certain certain uh, discontinuity in 
in the life. In the life. So, after creation, many attempts on technology, on the other side, pure sciences, and institutional. So, as I showed before, there is a bridge, but on top of the bridge, middle of the bridge, our golden age, the other Renaissance and uh, ancient ages. So, continue to thesis supporters or writers says there is not certain discontinuity. Some some years could be passed small changes in knowledge or in education or in technological devices. But it didn't stop, they say. But majority of the scientists in the, in the Western side, in the Western, uh, Western uh, countries, they say there is not, there is not any uh, progress in the in the in the years of Islam, we we can say. So, continue to means there is not there is not certain discontinuity in the life, in the human being life. Yes, please. This is the respectable person of the scientists in the Europe. Europe, Europe countries, the George Sutton says, the Middle Ages were pregnant with many ideas which couldn't be delivered until the much later. This is one of the uh, respectable and conscientious scientists. Yes, please. James Franklin is criticizing the Renaissance uh, scientists a little bit different. You can see, he says, there was a sudden dawning of a new outlook on the world after thousands of years of darkness. I think he is a little bit kidding with the other scientists, I mean the uh, Renaissance scientists. Is it interesting? And this is the Western scientists. Yes, please. Uh, yes, Edward Grant is the other respectable uh, scientist. He gives the, our scientists right to which is must be done. Translation into Latin or Greek and Arabic scientific texts text in the 12th and 13th centuries. So, when we look at these Three Western scientists, we see there is not the certain discontinuity in the human life from creation till now. Yes, please. And these are the, the other respectable orientalists. You see Helmut Ritter on the left side, with who is, who was, he passed away who was the Fuad Sezgin uh, advisor, we can say. Fuad Hoca, we say Fuad teacher, Fuad Hoca met him in, in Istanbul and uh, he worked with him many years and uh, he was the respectable and conscientious orientalist, one of them. And the others, I will not count one by one. But you can found them. Now, if the Western side, if the Western scientists are talking about there is discontinuity in the science, how can we explain this map? In our civilization period, in Baghdad, there is there was a house called House of Wisdom, House of Wisdom, established by established by 
Halif, Halife el Memun. We can, we can call this institution. It was the first international university. Why do I say so? Halife collected all the sciences from the, all over the world, from east part of the world, and uh, in Istanbul, today we say Istanbul, in that time Constantinople, and ancient Greek, and ancient Egypt, they, they picked up the scientists here, and they are the multinational scientists. They translated the ancient written text into Arabic. After the ancient ages in text, in the books, it's called between 5th and 15th century, 15th century. All these data translated, created, and produced the devices, technological devices, distributed to the to the Europe. In fact, we can say to the the, the other part of the world because there is there is no land after Portugal at the moment. Yeah. USA, America was not discovered at that moment. When was it discovered? It was discovered 1492. So the science abroad from all of the part to the Baghdad in House of Wisdom, and transferred, we can say, to the other part of the world. I mean, the European. So now, how can we say now, again, we ask this question, how can we say there is a certain discontinuity in science, technological development, and the other thing? We saw uh, from the maps. Now let's look at our our golden age period. When we look at uh, the chemistry, the chemistry, the father of the chemistry is uh, Jabir bin Hayyan, or Jabir. They called the European people called Jabir. They called, the European people called him as the father of the chemistry. When? Eighth century. Anyone told us, you have no heritage, you, have, you haven't got any heritage, in the old days, you will say, you will say, there was a man, is called Jabir bin Hayyan, you called him as what? Father of chemistry. Who said? European people said. The other example, Ibn al-Hazam, or they, they know him, al-Hazan, al-Hazan, he was called as the father of the optics. Is anyone working on optics here? No? No, okay, never mind. But that is the tenth of tenth century. And we we are we are we have actually we have the father of the optics. If if you use telephone, any kind of telephone, and do you have camera? Who discovered the camera? I mean, the, who discovered the optic? Yes, Ibn al -Haysan. When? 10th of century. 10th of century. Is that the scientific, scientific subject? Yes. Scientific implementation? Yes. 
8th century, 10th century and what about the uh, first global projected world, I mean the round world. It was, it was created by the time of Halife el Memun, who, who founded the wisdom of house in, in daily say, daily saying, international, first international university. When? 859. 859. Please, back please. Yes. That is the, uh, a picture which was painted by the European uh, artist, we can say. Okay, now these are the, for, for examples, if you want to, if you want to see more detailed knowledge, you will look at the, you will look at the uh, books and written texts. We will search on them what we want to see, what we want to learn about our, our past. Yes, there is another example you are familiar with, Avicenna or Ibn Sina, which one you are familiar? Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina. But Ibn Sina, Ibn Sina collected from our culture. His books, if I am not mistaken, were, his books were taught more than 400 years in the Europe, but they, they changed his name, Avicenna. If, if 50 years pass, someone can understand, someone knows who is Avicenna is or was. But when four years, 400 years passed, who will, who will remember Iblisina? They changed his name, but we didn't forget him. You didn't forget either. Sure. There is engraving a picture which was produced in 15th century by European scholars. There, there are three scientists there. On the left, Galen of Pergamon. On the right, Hippocrates. And in the middle, Ibn Sina. What is the difference between these three? And you look at the, can we say crown? Yes. You see the crown on the head of, in the middle of, person. It means he is or he was the king of medicine. Who says? Western culture says he was. But in our country, in our country, or well, most of the countries knows Hippocrates more than Ibn Sina. But they will change this fact. Our youth will change this fact. Yes, please. Two example. What we have done in the past, what are we doing now? What will we do next in the future? When I was as your age, I was taught the aviation is progressed by Wright brothers. Wright brothers. I think you did the same. I'm not talking about you actually. The, the, in the old days, you were taught as the same as. But when you go back to Indulus, uh, how, how, we call, how we pronounce Andalus. Andalusia, yes. When you go back to Andalusia, and there was a man, Ibn Firnas. He attempt first to fly. He produced some wings parts 
and he, he used these parts and he flew I don't know how, how far he flew but he attempted the flying attempt was done by him when ninth century ninth century pay attention please right brothers 20th century there is 11 century between them our culture our civilization thought the first flying idea okay your ancestors did our ancestors did in indologia you, if you follow the arrows there was a man flew in istanbul and in in the anatolia i mean the turkey land we are talking about veciyurkuş 1925 Nuri Demira, 1936. And the last one, do you know him? Who is? is it, isn't it clear? Our president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, is signing what? Kızıl Elma. Unmanned fighter. Jet, okay. I mean, I mean this. We, we did in the past. We are doing the technological and scientific attempts, and we show the result of the technological and scientific attempts. These are the real. Can anyone here? Sorry, can anyone tell me this Kızıl Elma is not a technological device? We cannot. He is the techno technological device. I don't remember Mr. Erdogan. I think 2,000 or 3,000 young people are working there. More than 2,000 young people as you are, are working in that factory, in that firm, which produced this, let's say, plane. Okay, yes, please. And education. Education. We, we were taught the oldest, the oldest university was Bologna in Italy, which Mr. Erdogan did PhD, uh, MS, MSc and PhD. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes. But uh, there is a slight difference between when the, that university founded, founded date, and we founded the university in Fas, Fes, Karayuvan University. Okay, when? 859, we founded. What time Bologna founded? You see, 1088. That is nearly 250 years we we did okay yes please and we are we are talking our civilization what did our civilization did in education side we example chemistry optics aviation and education and these are only four four examples if you want to learn more than these, you, you, will, you will look at the Professor Dr. Fuaz Sezgin books, uh, inshallah. Okay, we did something in the past. We are doing now, 
as civilization. And what will happen in the, in the future, you can see in, in, in Turkey, we are doing our best. Not we are doing for us, I mean the, not only for Turkey, but also all humanity. All humanity. But before all humanity, for our civilization world, you and the other brothers and sisters. Yes, please. The conclusion. Our president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, says, points out what we will do for the future, in the future. He says, we should work, we should learn to work, to work to, together. Why we are here now, dear rector? Why we are, he said, work together, we try to find the ways how to work together, first of all. Second, we should <coughs> join hands, join hands tightly, but okay, to create knowledge and produce technology so that no country will be deprived of such blessings. We will serve, we will create, we will produce all together and we will serve the innocent people or innocent societies. We will share the, what we did together. The other one is we must enlighten our youth about our glorious past as we did now. now this is the only start isn't it? I said a few words, but our heritage is more than a few words. And you will, you will look at, you will learn, you will work, you will work 18 hours a day as Professor Dr. Fuad Sezgin did his entire life. How many hours you will work? How many hours you will work a day? How many hours you will work today, every day? 18. More than 18 <laughs> hours you will work? In that case, if you do so, the continuity thesis will be real. Okay? We should do. The last one is, we should <clears throat> use all knowledge you produce and the outcomes of our studies for the good of humanity. But first of all, our civilization, after that, for humanity, we will use what we produce, what we achieved on this goal. So if we do so, the world will be better than today. Who will do all these things? Are we, do we do, <coughs> The, the, the gentleman in the front seat, or will you do? Which one? You will do. You will say, we will do. We will do, we will work without stopping. Two hours, three hours, you, you will sleep, and then you will carry on working, searching, what we, we, we did in the past, what we are doing now, what we will do <coughs> in the future. If we do so, the life will be better than today. Yes, please. The last thing. Fuat Hoca, Hoca means teacher. Fuat Hoca said, as Mr. Erdogan uh, said earlier, you can because you once did in the past. So, my dear brothers, sisters, you don't sleep more than you need it. You should work, you should work more than your civilization will need. Thank you very much. Mr. Rector, can we take one session for Q&A? Yes. Uh, okay. Such an interesting uh, presentation and very enlightening.
now I would like to invite you to have a questions, have a dialogue, conversation with our guest speaker. Uh, please, uh, students, raise your hand if you have anything to ask. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you can come forward and please give him a microphone. Oke, okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sir, I want to ask, nowadays many people say that Islamic technology is lagging behind the West on the ground that Islam still adheres to past technology. Whereas we know that many of the basic science of technology originate from Muslim. What is your opinion on this statement? Mr. Erdogan, you want to you want to answer this question? Uh, if if in Indonesian, di zaman sekarang banyak orang yang berkata bahwa teknologi Islam tertinggal dari Barat dengan alasan Islam masih menganut teknologi masa lalu. Sedangkan kita mengetahui bahwasannya banyak dasar ilmu teknologi yang berasal dari kaum Muslim. Apa tanggapan anda mengenai hal ini? Uh, not the I guess the, the main message is um, it, now we might be backward compared to the Western civilization and compared to where they reached in the last two centuries. But it doesn't mean that Western civilization will remain always as the highest civilization and no other civilization will be able to surpass it. Uh, unfortunately, we see many societal problems and issues in the Western societies now. I, I, as an economist, we know that economically too, both uh, from Adam Smith's perspective and both from Karl Marx's perspective, the capitalist system uh, is finite. And we don't know what's going to happen in the end. You know, Karl Marx had a, has an other opinion and uh, Adam Smith has a different opinion. But we see that capitalism itself is eating from within. You know, it's, it's sort of... Uh, because the, the income inequality is growing. Uh, we are destroying the earth uh, tremendously. I mean, wh what's happening with the climate change, what's happening with water resources, what's happening with many things is our own making and it's capitalism's and Western civilization's making. So uh, all we have to do is work hard, stick to our values, and we will see in the end that our values are going to provide humanity with the uh, solutions that it requires. But for that, I think we need scholars, we need thinkers, uh, and uh, really humanity is looking for these answers, but the West is not able to come up with answers because their perspective is limited to what capitalism has to offer. And capitalism, its first mission is to preserve itself. It is inimical to any alternative. So, and that's, that's unfortunately threatening the future of the world. So uh, it's not a matter of uh, whether we can do it. Muslims can definitely do it because we have done it. But we have to think very hard about uh, how capitalism will end and what's going to take its place. So we, we really need young thinkers to spend 18 hours a day thinking about these issues, researching these problems, uh, and uh, making sure with others, you know, conversing and competing of ideas. Thank you. Can I add a few verses? And besides, we learned many things from the 
Western written texts. Okay. We, we should follow, we should show, follow the texts or books which are telling the truth. Okay. So I, I, I give the example for Asesgin's books. Uh, inshallah, you will follow the th true books and written texts and uh, you, will, you will not be confused in the future. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Please give applause to our rector, our speaker. Uh, because of the time limitation, we are about to enter Maghrib prayer. We will uh, end the session, and thank you very much again. We are very honored to have you in here. Please. Uh, to conclude this session, uh, please allow me to give a few remarks, uh, just summarizing our conversation. Uh, summarizing the speech from our rector, first, Muslim scholars in the past, precedents, or came earlier, Western scholars in many fields. But we have the irony here about academic dishonesty, uh, Western civilization cut, they cut, they remove the footnote, they remove the role of Muslim scholars in the past. So again, the irony is that we Muslim students know Western scholars better than we know uh, Muslim scholars. This is the irony. We need to change the reality. And the third point that we, we were talking about, we need to do real things, real steps to advance sciences to achieve the second golden of Islamic age. Thank you very much for your attention. Again, please give applause to our speakers. And uh, we are hoping that we can uh, continue our conversation, have a further collaboration, and also we are hoping that we can access uh, the publication of Fuad Sesgin, if that possible, especially his work on Tarikh Turas al-Islami, the history of uh, you know, Islamic uh, sciences in the past, because we are really working hard on this field. So if there is a way, then uh, we are, we'll be very glad to have that books. And again, uh, I will close the session. I will give the, the microphone to our uh, MC. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Muhammad Rafiq Muzakir that has introduced and guided our keynote speaker today. Now we come to the last agenda, the photo session. We hope there presents in front of the stage Professor Dr. Insignor Gunawan Budianto, MPIPM, Mr. Faris Al Fadat, PhD, Mr. Muhammad Rafiq Muzakir, PhD, Ms. Fitri Arofiati, PhD, Mr. Idam Badru Zaman, PhD, Mr. Bilal Erdoga, Mr. Mijit Chentikaya, Professor Dr. Ersan Aslan. Assistant Professor Zeneb Bashas, Assistant Professor Dr. Mehtab Aral Duvan. The committee, please set the position in front of the stage. Okay. Okay, there will be three photo sessions, and the photographer, please uh, follow my instruction. For the first photo session, one, two, three. For the second, one, two, three. Okay, and the last one, one, two, three. Thank you. Okay, all of the participants, please come in front of the stage. Okay, please. The comedy, please help to arrange the participants in front of the stage. Okay, uh, could we change the place maybe? The ladies and gentlemen, could we change the place? Yeah. Yeah. Let's change the place. Okay, the comedy, please uh, arrange the participant.
stand behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Dibantu. Dibantu tambahin. Ya, mahasiswa yang mas bisa masuk ke dalam nggak ke row yang kedua row yang kedua aja ada yang di, yang di yang di row pertama bisa duduk yang di row kedua bisa berdiri mungkin iya oke okay. nah oke okay. oke okay, I will count it ya Allah oke double job ya oke now Okay, I'll count it. Di mepet mepetin aja dulu, di mepet mepetin. Bisa enggak? Okay, maybe the formal one. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, maybe the free pose. Okay, freestyle. Okay, free pose. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, the last one maybe I the sarangio pose or the hair pose. Okay, the last one, one, two, and three. Okay, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, finally we arrive at the end of today's agenda. Thank you for your all participation and allow me to conclude today's agenda by reciting Hamdallah together. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.